Hello, pod, dear friends. My name is Xavier, and you're watching Oh God, Guide Me. Today, we are joined by Nassim, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and her journey uh, in finding the Baha'i faith and the writings of Baha'u'llah. So welcome, Nassim. Thank you. Mm, you're very welcome. Um, so where are you? Where are you from? And what do you do? Um, so I am in Vintuk, Namibia. I was born and raised here, but my parents are originally Middle Eastern and Ethiopian. Okay. And I am a medical student. Yay! Ooh, we need more doctors, that's for sure. Always have more doctors. We do, we do. But, but this, this doctor in training actually took this year off. <laughs> <laughs> Faith, okay. health, and music. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so you go to college. How long have you been? Uh, how many How many years have you been pursuing this degree? Um, it's been like five years. Yeah, five years. Five years. Wow, nice. Very nice. <laughs> Still a bit to go yeah. though. <laughs> Just like one more year. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. So, when did you uh, first hear about the Baha'i Faith or first learn of it? Well, I was actually born into a Baha'i family. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so born into a Baha'i family. Uh, Mishkin Ghalam is actually my great, great, great grandfather on my mother's oh. side. She yeah. loves she loves us talking about that. She's like, Nassim, you know who is related to us? And I was like, Yes, mom, we know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, could you so tell was, if you're able to recount a little who 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 Mishkin is? Okay, so Mishin Ghalam was um, like one of Baha'u'llah's, I guess you could say right-hand men. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he would travel with him like whenever they would go to certain places. And he was also a famous calligrapher as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, beautiful writing and calligraphy and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, Mishkin's uh, calligraphy, was, uh, calligraphy was, was marvelous and superb, I've heard. Yeah, my mom's always like, I didn't inherit those artistic skills, unfortunately. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> um, so you were born in Baha'i. So, so your journey has been one of, sort of similar to me, I was also born into a Baha'i family. So you didn't so mm -hmm. much as find the faith as discover its truth. Yeah, I think that would be a good way to put it because – like just because you're born into a Baha'i family, same way someone's born into like a Christian family or an Islam family, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the path that your children choose. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like in my own way, like, you know, I still did individual investigation of my own spiritual path and, my own, and what I believe is the truth for me. And especially like when I was a teenager, I think, you know, um, junior youth groups as one of the Baha'i core activities is very important and I see that when I got older because you know especially guidance with um, our body the Universal House of Justice in Haifa mm -hmm. you know they sent that letter where junior youth groups are so impactful because you know going from this preteen to teenage stage is such um, an emotionally tasking challenge because oh, you know yeah. so many things are changing <laughs> And Absolutely. even your views, even your views get shaky, man. Like I remember, you know, being a junior youth, and especially with like kids, and sometimes a teensy bit of bullying here and there, or someone trying to push you over. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like how you look at now, where you're like, oh, that that was like my entire world. You look back, and you're like, sometimes those kids are dumb. Like, <laughs> Absolutely, that's like our entire world. I think we've all been there. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's I think, wonderful. I think that, like, I remember, like, I think my junior youth to, like, my junior youth age, like, I think for a year or two, I wasn't as close to the faith and I had, all right. So I was saying, um, so as a junior youth, I remember that there was, like, a year of my life where, like, I was questioning everything. I wasn't just accepting everything, mm -hmm. you know, and, like, I, I, I would say I was a bit difficult. I would say that I was a little bit of Brett like every now and then <laughs> and I remember just having so many questions and not having as much faith because like you know things to me felt so bad in certain situations and I would always question God like you know why and it's really hard especially at that age to 
understand a lot of the reasoning that as you get older, it's like, you know, a lot of the wisdoms are revealed at some point. Mm-hmm. And so I remember like, it was really difficult for me, but then like I started finding my path again and, you know, I did the IB program, the international baccalaureate program at my school, Adventic Ooh. International. Very cool. And yeah, I mean, it sounds cooler than it really is. And we still can't spell baccalaureate to save our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but part of the program is that you have to do these things called cast hours, creativity, action, and service, 50 hours of each. So my service hours and even my creativity hours were like, oh, okay. I mean, you know, as a Baha'i, like I was doing two children's classes, one with my mom and I was helping animate a junior youth group. So I was like, oh, it's going to be easy. And then I really delved myself into a lot of the service I was doing. And, you know, I had been doing this children's class since I was a junior youth. And I had watched these kids grow up from oh. going to like the first level to the higher levels. What and a like now experience I mean, that is. It truly is. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful to see them grow. And now I see some of them coming to the center. And some of them like that used to come up to like my knee are now my height or taller. I mean, I'm not a tall person to begin with, but it's just weird like <laughs> seeing that transition. Yeah. It's weird, but it's also like fulfilling. And some of them now university you know like 17 18 and they're like you know we really thank you and auntie sophie my mom like you guys kept us out of trouble you guys helped us with our reading and writing and like we really did better in school and we actually had hope because of you guys yep we're back <laughs> <laughs> no worries um so you a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Um, you said that <laughs> you were able to find that truth for yourself, and that's such an important aspect of the Baha'i faith is discovering mm-hmm. its falsehood or its truths for yourself. And uh, your mm-hmm. conclusion was that it was, in fact, true. <laughs> yep. Wonderful. And so um, you're still involved in those, uh, what children's classes or uh, Ruhi activity are you still involved with uh, currently? So currently, um, like service activities that I'm personally involved in, I'm a tutor for um, a book one now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm co-tutoring with my mom and I'm about to start tutoring another one also via Zoom sessions now since we're under quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I'm also part of a book 11, um, book 11 unit one that we're also doing on Zoom with like a bunch of different people from around the world. Oh, that's Mostly Africa and Canada, as far as I can ascertain, I think that's all the countries we're from. <laughs> It'll and grow then, um, uh, every country in the world eventually. <laughs> every country, hopefully, you know. That'll be a lot of opinions, though. It's like, raise your hand to talk, and there's like a lineup of like 10 people at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I used to do, I used to have two children's classes and um, two junior youth groups Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger and in high school. And then when I got into medical school, um, I I had someone else take over the children's class that we used to have at our house with the neighborhood Mm -hmm. kids. Um, Yeah, his name's Farka. And then we also had, um, the other children's class was taken over by, um, uh, yeah, a family friend to a family <laughs> who's been in law now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah. so that's great. That's great so that you're still amazing. able to find the time to, to do that, even going through the rigors of medical school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think medical school was also a challenge for me. I think it was another spiritual test from God as well. Because first year and second year weren't that difficult, but like third year, like onwards, mm-hmm. like, university and tertiary education is not always what we expect it to be and so i just remember that you know you kind of just hope you'll be a student and you study and you just have normal stress from being a student but i mean even with like you know a little bit of corruption a little bit of this and that like you know a lot of us students would sometimes be subject to a lot of unfairness and so another reason why i would taken this year off was because i remember I was very far from God and it made it a lot worse for me as my experience was in medical school. And I realized that I needed to take a step back and focus on faith and God and allow my spiritual path to develop again, because if I'm going to try and continue medicine and something that has that level of responsibility, like saving lives, I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times in our setting, 
you know, you already start practicals in the hospital and clinics from your second year of study. So we were already used to being in the hospital and taking patient histories and treating people. I mean, I like there was one intern who like she was drawing blood from a baby for an HIV test and then she mm. wasn't very careful and the needle went in my arm when she removed it and like it stabbed my arm. Oh my goodness. And, and I remember like my first instinct when she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like my first instinct, I wasn't even listening to her. I was like asking the mother, sorry, man, I just want to know your HIV status. She says she's positive. I'm like, okay. Then I'm like, okay, the baby, like my mind, I'm going through, okay, nine months, 18 months, zero positive, everything. And so I had to go on PEP. So there's many times, you know, we're already exposed to like risking our lives, like going to the TB ward, like resuscitating mm-hmm. patients, those sorts of things. Like we're already used to doing that, especially getting higher up in seniority. And so especially like with the time that's now where, you know, it's the whole coronavirus pandemic. And like, I'm really happy there's a lot of light being shed on the work that healthcare workers do. Oh and- yeah, they're, the appreciation that they're experiencing now is just phenomenal. I, it, it can't be understated. They're... Uh, input and need in society. It really can't. Yeah, for sure. So, but, yeah. Well, that's why. That's another reason why I took this year off to develop my faith because I feel like if you're going to have that responsibility of human lives, mm-hmm. you know, you really have to make sure that you're also okay with everything that's happening in your life and you also have to make sure that you're strong for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's no, there's no greater foundation of strength than the foundation of God's teachings. Oh, amen, right there. <laughs> and so that's a wonderful story. What an experience that would uh, that must have been for you. I can't imagine. I personally can't imagine that. Um, <laughs> it was special. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's really wonderful. Um, during that time, or during this time, now that you've, you've taken this time off to really center yourself and, and gain that foundation, what are some... What are some writings, any writings particularly that you are really uh, fond of that really help you through the day? Um, I think my favorite, my favorite like prayer of all time is probably Tablet of Ahmed because oh. we're not going like, to say that one here because it's a bit lengthy, but no. you ever want to look it up? It's a beautiful prayer. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Like I would advise like everyone at home watching like Baha'i or on Baha'i just write the tablet of Ahmed and read the prayer and you'll just be like oh my goodness like poetic yeah. it's poetic profound it's beautiful it really is it's especially because it's also prayer for like tests and difficulties and when you feel like you're really going through a rough time and with my transition when I graduated high school and like the IB program like I remember like it was like a gap year, basically, not really a gap year. It was like a couple of months between like graduating from IB and going into medical school here. So we're mm-hmm. traveling and everything. And I remember praying a lot. I remember saying it a lot, like almost every single day I was saying it basically. And especially in medical school, I was saying it a lot because I realized there were so many trials and tribulations. And even now I don't necessarily have the same stress of school that I had before, but I still say it because, you know, it's something that's really like close to my heart. Like literally, especially when you get to the end of the prayer where it says, you know, if you're saying this, if you're reading this with absolute sincerity, God will dispel his afflictions. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I always start tearing up there. Cause I'm like, God, I'm saying it with so much sincerity. You don't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's grand. That's just absolutely beautiful. Wow. What a, yeah, what a... That's my favorite prayer. And then, like, another writing that's one of my favorites is um, uh, one that I'm working into a song right now as a chorus. It's where there is love, nothing is too much trouble, and there's always time. Wonderful. Could we, would you guys like to hear that from this scene? I bet you would. I would. I would certainly (laughs) like to hear it. Would you mind playing a little bit for us? Sure. I think oh, I can my. play a little bit of the chorus. I'm still rehearsing this song, so I feel Don't like work. people. A work in progress. So we're the we're the early <laughs> we're the early people, the early birds. Yes, very much. Yeah. So this is the chorus part of the song. When there is love. Nothing 
is too much trouble. Nothing is too much trouble. Where there is love, nothing is too much trouble. Nothing is too much trouble. There is always time, time, time. 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 Where there is love, oh, nothing is too much trouble. Nothing is too much trouble. So yeah. <laughs> That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be sure to, um, I'm sure to link your YouTube video because she does have a YouTube video with beautiful music, or YouTube channel with beautiful music on it. And that link will be in the I description. <laughs> that link will be in the description mm -hmm. for all of you to visit and check out because you are in for a treat. Uh, the lovely voice. Uh, this recording is not doing justice. <laughs> So thank you very much for sharing that. Um, and is there anything else you'd like to, that, <laughs> no worries. Is there anything else you'd like to let the audience know about or anything, you know, significant you think they should know uh, before we leave here today? Um, I think if there's one thing that I would love people to take away from this, besides me babbling and going on about my life and like, how hard it was, <laughs> it really hard. Like I live in Africa, but like this is a lot of first world problem talk right now. <laughs> um, I think it would be that, you know, I think, especially like considering the time that we're in right now with this whole pandemic, I know a lot of people are very scared. And especially when you don't understand something very well, it's, it's understandable to have that level of fear. Absolutely. But I would just say that I think that everyone is a human being and we all have those natural fears and anxiety that we have instilled within us. I don't think that it would be right to say that they don't exist. But I think that one thing that gives me strength, not just as a Baha'i, but as a spiritual being, is that I try to allow my faith in God and what his will is for us as human beings to outweigh my fears and anxieties. Mm. And that's how I go through a lot of medical school as well, even in those tough times. Like when I have faith in God that even if something's not going great, I still say, thank you, God, for letting me go through this test. Thank you for thinking that I'm strong enough to go through this. Oh. Thank you for giving me a way to start connecting with people again, because this pandemic is scary. But so many of us are opening our hearts up again to faith and to God and to learning. And I think that's a beautiful thing and spending time with our loved ones. So although it's a very scary time for a lot of people, I'm just happy that there are some silver linings here. Absolutely. Beautifully said. What a beautiful soul you are. Uh, <laughs> I, I, well, it was a pleasure you. having you on today. Love the music. Loved your story. Um, thank you, guys. I hope you all enjoyed watching it. Um, again, links in the description to her YouTube channel. Uh, like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and uh, check out my other videos. and. You know, have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.